Good morning or good afternoon, sixth grade. It's good to see you guys virtually again. Um, I really enjoyed your analogous colors with contour lines that were coming up. So we're going to be working on a new project. So we did a lot of line work. We did a lot of work with colors. And so we're kind of going through the elements of art and doing a project for each. So in the beginning, we did lines. Um, and then we did, like I said, color for the analogous colors. So now we're going to jump into value. And so the only thing we're going to need for this project is that tiny little square that I gave you and a pencil. And so you want to make sure that you have a nice sharp pencil because we're going to be using the edge of the pencil quite a bit instead of the tip, which we're used to. So this is our project. I know it's a little difficult to see because of the quality of the camera, but I hope it focuses enough where you can see um, the value, which I know, like I said, it's a little difficult to see. But um, there's a lot of value in this drawing. Um, I'll take a picture and then upload it to Google Classroom so you can see all the different kinds of value because it's not just um, white and black like it looks like it is. So we're going to get started on this project. So the first thing we're going to do is create these kinds of divots um, in our project so that we can have these wonderful, what to me looks like string cheese or um, like vines or kind of like a membrane um, underneath. So first we're going to start with these big um, pieces so that we have the holes or the windows to look through. So on this drawing, I have one, two, three, four, five, and the tiny one, six. I just require that you have five of them. If you want to place a little hole in one of them like I did, you're more than welcome to. But we're going to start with five abstract shapes, right? They don't have to be circles. They can be kind of funny and abstract or irregular. So I have one and two, three, four, and my last one, five. So I have my five shapes that are going to be poking, um, that are going to be the holes that I look through, right? So the first thing we want to start with is creating these kind of vines or what I like to call like string cheese because it looks like it's being pulled. Um, kind of lines and if you can follow with your eyes you'll see that my lines connect even though there's kind of like a barrier here it still connects through the other hole or window so I have one continuous kind of vine or a piece of string cheese pulling and then even up here I have this one connecting through here and then down through this window and then the same thing going this way connecting right even through the window so that's what we want to do so we're going to start with I'd say try to create one in each box so you don't get too confused. And when we're drawing it, we don't want it to just be like a straight line. If you notice, mine have kind of like web, like webbing, like it comes out of the picture. It's not a completely straight line. It's a curved line. So there I've got one, and that's passing through two of my holes. So I'm good on that side. I might do... Another one. And so I'm going to go underneath this line that I've created. And maybe I want this one to come and pass through this window. And maybe even come up through this one. And so there we go. So now I have, you can kind of see I have one going across and then this big one that's kind of like connected, like mozzarella cheese that's like hanging. So these are my two lines that I've created. Now I can come in and draw the smaller lines. Like if you see, I have the two larger ones and then these smaller kind of pieces of cheese that are running through. So the lines that I make underneath have to be smaller than these lines that I've made on top. So I'm going to start here, and maybe they only pass through this window. They don't connect through the other windows. You can see I'm making it a lot more slender, but still following the same rule, right? It should not be a straight line. It kind of has, like, roots, kind of like a trunk of a tree. And then maybe I'll do one coming this way. And 
one in this window. And maybe this one will come down through this window too. And so I can even make ones underneath, but for the purpose of me showing you, I'm going to create one more layer, um, but you can do up to four or five layers. It's up to you. So when I make a third layer, I have to make sure that it goes underneath both of my two layers. It can't just pop up over here because then that wouldn't be a third layer. The point is for it to go underneath this one that's just passed. So I'm going to draw an even smaller one. And this one will go all the way through here. So now I'm ready to start shading. So the shading is kind of where it gets a little tricky when we start. So the first thing that I recommend doing is shading lightly through all of your windows, just the inside of your window. So you're just doing a nice even shade on the inside, kind of creating a ring on the inside of a shadow. So if you notice while I'm shading, I'm pressing my pencil sideways, even the way I'm holding it. I'm not holding it super close here. This is so much control that you want to press hard. If you hold it further away from the point, like closer to the end, and you just drag it across your page, you have less control of the pressure on it because it's looser in your hands. So it's a lot easier to shade. And when I'm shading, I'm keeping the same motion, right? So if I'm going back and forth side to side, then that's what I'm doing throughout the whole picture. I'm not going to change directions, start to go up and down, because then it'll notice, you'll see it in my um, shading. You'll see those lines, the harsh lines. So we want to make sure it's, it's blending. Another thing you could do is if you like to go in a circular motion, you can do that too. Kind of drag out the color of your lead. Okay, now that I have all five of my boxes shaded, um, the next thing I'm going to do is start to shade individually these kind of string cheese pieces. So I'm going to show you in one section what you need to do for all five sections. So hopefully you understand it. If you have any questions, email me, comment on Google Classroom, or make sure it's professional and academic, but I will get to you as soon as um, I see your comment, okay? So let's shade this. Oh, whoops, wrong way this section right here. So we're going to work on this one. Okay, so if we see I have three layers, right? Well, actually four. I have one, two, three, and four. I'm going from the one that's closest to the window to the one that's furthest in the back, right? So we're going to start with the one closest to the window. So when we shade this one, this one's going to have a lot of white um, space. It's not going to have a lot of dark shading just because it's the one that's closest to our light source. So see I'm just gently shading the edges kind of dragging out my shadow here to create a nice
shadow. So you can see my shadow that I've created. Okay, so I have a light shadow there. My next one, and this part I've left completely white, um, this next vine is going to have a darker shadow because it's the second one. So I'm going to drag out my shadow even further. Again, trying to blend so that I don't have any lines because we just did the original shadow of the window. So now I need to blend out those lines. So you can see it's it's already clearly a lot darker. And then I also want to bear in mind that this vine or a piece of string cheese or a line is going over this second one. So there's a shadow that's created right here on the edges of my vine. So I want to make sure to have a nice shadow indicating that it's on top, right? There's a shadow because there's a light. And this is the absence of light. And again, we just blend it out so we don't have harsh, harsh lines. But there we go, we have two shadows, right? So a lighter shadow, a medium tone shadow. Now we're gonna get closer to the darker tone shadows. So for this one, I can also just blend out the shadow a little bit more but, and do this shadow that this vine has created. So let me just do that really quick. But since it's underneath, what would have been three layers instead of shading and leaving this part white we actually want to do the inverse so we're going to shade the middle of it a darker tone and leave the edges white and the reason we do that is because when we start to color in um the more dramatic pieces we need to see that the vine exists underneath um and if we don't have that highlight, then it kind of gets lost in our picture. So we want to make sure we have the edges with a nice highlight and then the shadow in the center and then the shadow on the sides. So right, I have a nice shadow in the middle and two highlights on the side. And I can do this again for the one in the back too. And you'll notice that as you do it, your shading will get a lot skinnier and kind of look like you're just drawing a line, which is totally fine. Okay, so there we go. We've built up a lot of shadows. Add shadows to all four boxes and then start to shade the darkest piece. And when I'm shading that dark piece, I really want to outline the area with a nice hard pencil lines and then start to fill it. And this part, I brought my my hand a lot closer on my pencil so I have more control. And I'm really shading dark because I want it to stand out. And then I would start a new section, same thing. Oops, sorry, outline our piece first. So when you start to shade really heavily, you're going to notice that you do see a lot of your pencil strokes. So what I do is I go over it again, going up and down, and then I go side to side to just kind of blur them out. And then I do a new section. And then again, color until we finish the entire window.
Okay, so now with that we've colored the darkest shade, we have to go back and kind of bring out those tones again inside of our drawing since it kind of looks more um, contrasting instead of a grady of um, value, which is what we want. We want like a transitioning of values, not just dark and light. So what we can do is darken our shadows a bit where the window exists. So we'll darken that side. Come in and darken this side. Oops. So darken this side. Come back and darken these smaller pieces. And even darken the shading inside of my vine. So the ones furthest to the back have the shading on the inside of the vine. And the ones closest to us have the shading on the outer corners. So there we go, now we have a bit more dimension. Like I said, I know it's difficult to see all my shadows. But there, there is a little bit better. So now you can see the transitioning colors and shadows that I've created. Um, so that's what we want the next four windows to look like. That gradual gradation of value coming from a dark point and then the lightest point should be the one on top. So the more, kind of vines or what I call string cheese, little pieces that you add, the more interesting your piece looks. This is only four layers. This is about probably six layers. So it just depends on how much uh, work you're willing to put into it. I will only require four layers. I'll put a rubric on um, Google Classroom for you to see. And if you have any questions on how to do it, just email me or let me know and I will be able to answer your questions. The last thing that I didn't mention that I did um, was that I re-outlined my lines because they add more dimension to the pieces and they make them stand out a lot more. So that's what we want. So just re-outline so you have nice clean edges and there you go. Okay, sixth grade, I hope you have fun creating this value project. I can't wait to see what they look like. Um, I hope they're more interesting than my pieces are, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.